This is Jay Ward. I'm about to do this feature at Upstage Legendary Touch One Productions. Hope you like it. I also have a book on Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com, Life, Power, Soul. Check that out when you get a chance. Uh, also, you can catch me at Instagram, jward2030, Facebook, jward, and my website, jwardpoetry.com. Hey, yo, Jay C picked the right week to put me on because this is the cat that I would want to introduce if I could choose anybody to introduce, man. This is like, everybody has seen this cat perform before and know he one of the illest cats out here, man. Like, and I just found, I just found out. I just found out about this like on Sunday. I was like, I was like, who is the feature? And JC was like, Jay Ward. I was like, what? Who is that Red at 28th? I was like, Jay Ward. Let's go. So, are y'all ready for y'all feature artist for the night? Yeah! Y'all make some noise for one of the dopest cats you ever gonna see. Jay Ward. Come on, man. So if y'all know this, sing along. la di da -di, we like to party. We don't cause trouble and we don't bother nobody here. Just the men that's on the mic. And when we rock up on the mic, we rock the mic. So like half of y'all know old school hip hop. The other half doesn't know old school hip hop, apparently. Let's try this one more time. If you know this, sing along. You, you got what I need. But you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby, you. Word. Uh, all right, try this one. Uh, back in the days when, when I was young, I was not a kid anymore. Some days I didn't wish I was a kid again. Word, word. All right, try this one, try this one. Uh, never meant to make your daughter cry. I apologize a trillion times. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Oh, I am for real. Like for real, like for real, like for real, like for real, like like for real. This is where the gold lace legacy of hip hop has led to. Unapologetic success, pathetic regress, apathetic at best, from gold to platinum to shiny pants to bling to who cares as long as I make it forsaken this thing that made me hide under the covers at night. Laying on the bed, headphones on tight, just so my parents wouldn't know I was still up. Stealth touch of a ninja using two fingers, one to press stop and one to stop the play button from popping up too loud. Flip right. the cassette, press fast forward halfway down so you don't hear that click sound. Flip the tape again. Flip the tape again just, just so I can hear that verse again because the first Walkman's only had stopped playing fast forward. There was no reverse then. Damn right. And I just want to go back. I just want to go back. Does it make me a regressionist to think the future's in our past or am I a progressive revisionist looking to revise the cast or revise the cast or redevelop the plot and the actors so we can get to know the characters instead of just sketching the caricatures? Right. I just want hip hop to be alive again. And they right. say she's not dead, but walking and breathing and existing is not living. Okay. Having some parts that function and move is not living. Right. Thriving from efforts to make everyone feel you, but never reaching out to touch everyone you can is not living. It is simply taking up space. Footprints on a lonely shore just before tide, meaningful only to the one that left it, a gift only valuable in the present, but how can we teach our sons to walk with washed away footprints? Yeah. And I suppose, I suppose Run DMC started something with media campaigns when they rocked Adidas and told us to walk this way, but whoever died by a tennis shoe? See, nowadays, targeted marketing has rap music targeting teenage audiences with cognac and champagne, so if it's true, you have to take two steps back to take one forward, then I got my drink and my two-step, my drink and my two-step, got my drink and my two-step, my drink and my two-step, like, like Dorothy with those red slippers just trying to make my way back. Back to a time when hip hop was more than a mass of blanketed coverings of consciences slumbering while its future was suffering. More than a time you had to press fast forward to go backwards. It was a time when it was a movement, a feeling, a realness that didn't involve shooting, killing, or selling drugs. It involved being who you were. Recognizing your past and your mistakes, but not glorifying them. It was a time when battling, fighting, and beef had nothing to do with fighting in the streets. It was who had better skills, lyrics, and beats. It was my childhood. And I just want to go back, like back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore, but sometimes I sit and wish I was a kid again, because I realize now, I realize now that the ability to make a song does not equate to the ability to make music. Right. And record labels will tell you this is simply supply and demand. They will tell you the consumer wants this. Right. 
right. I will tell you, if you force feed heroin into someone's veins long enough, they will continue to want it right. and beg yes. for it and steal for it, all the while it is destroying the fundamental core of who they are, and hip-hop has lost its most critical H, the one in the middle, making it hip-hop into hip-hop, hip-hop, hip-hop. When art is made for someone else's taste and not the taste of the artist, yeah, right. it and ceases to become right. art. Yeah. It is now just a five ninety nine reproduced wall decoration from the Amy Walmart. I want Rembrandt. I want Masterpiece. I want Annie Lee. I want Blackshear. I want love notes written on papyrus and stone tablets and hieroglyphic alphabets what? written in past fears. I want true artistic expression carved out of post-traumatic aggression or uplifting melodies born from strength greater than depression. But instead, instead, I find myself listening to the radio. Come on now. Trying to fast forward songs yeah. on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> Hoping it will flip hip-hop into reverse and take me back. Like back in the days when, when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. Hip hop music is leaking up through your speakers. Creeping out your freezer, the coldest thing you done seen for these beats, I'm coming to heat up. My Swiss flows, Swiss flows, heaven knows that's word up to Miss Alicia. Stepping in that ring, I'll be the number one contender. Something to consider that's burning on like the embers. I'm coming in like I'm been the future rama for the drama. Mean a later for the haters. Since my daddy's alligators, I've been stunting. So I'm thinking back until I'm delivered. From Martin Luther to Malcolm, we had the realest spitters. You know that white man roll, quiet up, nigga. Coming up off each other, co cock and I'm pulling triggers. So I'm thinking my black is beautiful. Bloody from the past, got it packed up under my cuticles. Go, Sweating boy. for the truth and it's rooted in every follicle. I might be quarter white, but one drop will take that up out of you. Whoa. Yeah. I'm definitely a connoisseur of hip hop. That's why I asked my man Roman to come up here. Give it up for him again. Yeah. You once told me that I was a typical man, not capable of putting into words exactly how I feel about you. So, baby. I chocolate cake you. I early Sunday morning you. Stevie Wonder songs in the key of life you. Somewhere a small child in a dusty library daydreams Mark Twain and Maya Angelou as lovers in a twisted Shakespearean retelling of Othello. I grammar and language you. Netflix you. Kindle gift card you. Sniper bid at the last minute to win it for $10 below market price eBay you. I sip lemonade on front porch country swings you. Ice cream you, sugar cookie smothered in chocolate frosting you. You are the kiss of a powdered donut, I can't get enough sugar you. I Bahama mama you, Hennessy double shot no ice you. Saturday morning cartoon rescue rangers after school, thunder, thunder, thundercats. Oh, you are not a hoe. Back to school special you. You have touched your hand to my heart. I Starfleet combat you, Star Wars you, late night raid on the comic book store you. There are times we have both been left unintentionally broken. I, Yan Le Van Zant you? Yes. I may not speak if I think my actions do a better job at it. I blues clues you. Cyrano de Bergerac you. Private joke you, laugh out loud you. You are my quiet time. I. Kids are finally in bed, you. Pillow fight, you. Sing at the top of my lungs, no matter who's watching at stoplights, you. <laughs> everything, you. You are curious and funny and whimsical. I have always cat with a string, you. There may be no better way to express how I feel than to just say that I second chance, you. But I do have a confession to make. I don't actually like chocolate cake. On our second date, you ordered the mild high version with vanilla buttercream, requested two spoons, handed one to me, refusal to accept no etched between your thumb and forefinger, watched my eyes, my mouth, felt everything, exhaled your eyes backward and smiled as my fingertips played lightly across each knuckle, my thumb panning for gold over the back of your hand. It was never the things that made us fall in cinnamon graham cracker s'mores. It was the moments. So, I chocolate cake you with all of my orange sherbet push pop.
Um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what scares me the most. Um, I've talked to so many women uh, and so many girls who um, have, have had traumatic things in their life. Yeah, um, and it's, uh, whatever, whatever the ratio that they say it is, whatever the percentage they say it is, it, it's so much higher than that. And um, it scares me to death to think that my, my girls could go through something and I not know about it. Um, and it got me yeah. thinking one day, I was, I was having a conversation with somebody and we were talking about rape culture. Uh, we were talking about music right now. And we were talking about just, just how things are positioned in our society uh, that make it harder for someone to come forward and easier for someone to get away with something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what this poem is about. <clears throat> When Emma Sokowitz began her daily walk through the campus of Columbia University, carrying the mattress she was raped on because the school would not take action against her still enrolled assailant. When CeeLo Green tweeted that people who have been raped remember, implying that being unknowingly drugged and unconscious is consent. When I heard little girls happily sing along with the words of Rick Ross, put Molly all in her champagne, she ain't even know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that. She ain't even know it. I fully understood why fathers begin hating little boys as soon as their daughters are born. Carry baseball bats by age 11. Tell stories of the nice boy down the street who will change colors during chemistry homework. Yearn for the sweetness of her 16. Rewind blurred lines in his mind. Convince himself out loud no matter what you say now. I know you like it. I know you like it. You're a good girl. Is it paranoia to persuade her that the bartender at Butters on her 21st birthday could slip consent into her cosmo? Toss her torn blouse just as the wood thrush starts its morning song. Offer a smirk for a thank you. You never said no dangling like arrogant participles from his tongue. What if I don't warn her, don't tell her that this is still the age of men, that we have mass marketed misogyny and called it music, that we have bragged about beating it up and called it romance, that we have sung the words to every lullaby and will not call it rape. There are cracks in the foundation. We all fall for it. In the words of Pitbull, she says she won't, but I bet she will. Timber, we all fall for it. If she were to fall, like the doors of Babylon after someone slipped something into its water, whose fault would it be? Should I not fight for such holy ground when there are infidels willing to view the vomit of her silence as pleasure, view her consent like things of legend that stand and decay and then crumble under the weight of shifting earth as powerful as these hands are? I know I am not strong enough to carry the weight of a semen-stained mattress from the cafeteria to the biology lab and then back again. I know as vehemently as I want to make this world listen. It is not my story to tell, but when a group of students and alumni showed up and carried that mattress for Emma Sokowitz, I learned that we can all help with something. Fathers, fathers, it may not be your story to tell, but you better make sure that story gets told. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the day that I come to realize it is already too late to protect my daughter, that there are bed sheets tied across the span of her shoulders, a back seat an old couch, an abandoned classroom, her boneyard, I will recognize the futility of a Louisville slugger, will loosen my grip as it falls to my side, will instead oh, okay. hold the earthquake of her within the fault lines of my own palms, tight enough to stop the tremors, assure her that she is still daddy's little girl, she is still holy ground, and apologize for only noticing her foundation was shaken after the cracks were visible. Star Wars fans here? There are some Star Wars fans? Cool. In the world of Star Wars, some men like to see Princess Leia in a sheer white gown, like she wore as a prisoner on the Death Star. Most men like to see Princess Leia in a metal bikini, like she wore as a slave to Jabba the Hutt. I like my Leia strong. I like my Leia warrior. I like my Leia fighting with Ewoks on the forest moon of Endor, stormtroopers and at ats being no match. She helps destroy the shield generator of the fully operational Death Star, okay. even though Admiral Akbar will acknowledge it's a trap. <laughs> Han Solo fell in love with the warrior Leia. The one with the humility to help and the competence to take control if needed. Anything else is a trap. I don't want you to settle, Leia. 
I don't want you to conform to an image to placate the kind of man that will recycle you once the image fades. Holograms are science fiction, not self-esteem. Leia, I'm sorry. You have seen my hypocrisy firsthand. Heard me threaten to choke galaxies between fingers. I am more machine now than man. Twisted like the metal of the bikini they'd rather you be seen in. These electronic sensors don't always register common sense or I would have come back to you years ago. I know you blame me for what happened to your mother. Please understand, everything I did was for you. That's not true. Everything I did was for me, but everything I held back from doing was for you. Daughters are the blank canvas that a man needs to reinvent portraits of misshapen intentions into a pinwheel of any color other than black or white. If I were, if I were to die tomorrow on Hoth, a cold world of ice, because laying within the warm guts of a tauntaun couldn't keep me alive. If on my way to save you, I got stuck in a trash compactor with a one-eyed carnivorous creature and our eccentric astromech joy was taking his sweet time getting us out. Just know that I tried. I didn't always want to be this man I've become. We all have a dark side. Big up to Luke Skywalker for still seeing the good in his father, for not letting him give in to hate. I once told you I would love you regardless if you decided to reciprocate. If that happens and you feel like you waited too late, don't worry. Fatherhood means never having to know that you're sorry. For the record, I like my layer just like you. Find a man with a millennium falcon, a furry friend, and a mischievous mask that hides a heart of gold, not a mask of gold that hides a mischievous heart. Find someone who will treat you like a princess, but appreciates the warrior in you. On my deathbed, if you can look past this funeral pyre I call a mask, look past these halos I wear around scarlet letters and call anarchy, then tell me you believe in me, tell me you want to save me, and I will assure you with my last breath, <laughs> you already have. <laughs> 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 The summer I realized my grandmother only had one breast, I was too young to consider avoiding eye contact as an option. That is to say, the summer I realized my grandmother was mythic warrior in flowered house coat, I was too young to consider staring to be taboo. The way she graced blouses and swimsuits, garments carefully folded and tucked by the seams, I thought perhaps her heart was more exposed this way. Perhaps her heart swelled heavier here to account for balance, or perhaps she was trying to teach me that it was neither the absence nor presence of substance in the origami of her bosom that constituted womanhood. To this day, I make eye contact a priority. Because of my grandmother, I have viewed every woman I've ever met as an origami swan, beautiful and elegant, and I have no idea what makes them work. But you're not supposed to be able to duplicate a masterpiece. Not supposed to create cliches for the comfort of limited vocabulary. I learned some time ago that in my poems, I tend to use the word beautiful too much. In this one, it is impossible to use it enough. I will be redundant on purpose. I will time travel just to have one more conversation with her. I will say, in your darkest moments, when the sun is a capsized paper lantern, when the warmth against your skin is no longer welcome, when dancing under the moon is more metaphor than it is narrative. Ask an origami swan whether it feels graceful. It might refer to its flat, its folded lines and creases the way you refer to scars, stretch marks, and wrinkles, but it is no less beautiful. The younger me was too stupid, slightly selfish, didn't realize that unspoken words can cause as much damage as spoken ones can heal. That is to say, I was too busy begging for more peanut butter cookies. Too busy complaining about why I had to drink milk with my lunch. Too busy staring and wondering why people were staring that I never took the opportunity to let you know that you are beautiful. That you are folded but in no way bent. Bent but in no way broken. Broken but every bit as powerful as you believe yourself to be and no less beautiful. You are beautiful. You are an origami swan of pink ribbon and strength and peanut butter cookies and kisses on wounds and scars that take too long to heal. People stare because you are beautiful and they are not sure what other word to use. That radioactive glow is not from the chemo, it's your halo, it's your smile, it's your love, it's your exposed heart, a swollen star under your torso. Our generation still orbits your matriarchy. You are no paper lantern, you are the sun, a swan, a brightly lit paper thing. You are woman, stronger than cancer, 
Your heart, deeper than any scalpel could ever reach, you are beautiful. I love you, Granny. I still see you in every woman I meet. I still make eye contact a priority. So, I know for myself, the last week and a half has been really, um, really vexing. And not even because, not even because I, I didn't expect the verdicts to go this way, right? But, but just the reality of it. Right. Um, when buying a dog. Come on, Jack. Let's get it, boy. Let's get it. In Ferguson, Missouri. It is important for you to accept that it will occasionally misbehave. You should know the secret to an obedient canine is to control its food supply. Control how and when affection is shown. Give it a job. Give it a yard. Let it walk its yard. Let it protect its yard. Let it think it owns its yard. Make it hate the sight of dogs. Blame everything bad on its nature and everything good on your training. And if it ever steps too far out of line to keep in its own yard and you must take action, remember, it is just a dog. It will only ever be a dog. Buy a black dog, a brown dog. Buy a Mike Brown dog, mm -hmm. a John Crawford, Eric Garner, Oscar Grant, Sean Bell, Amadou Diallo, Trayvon Martin, Jonathan Farrell dog. Tell it, we have a black president now, so what happens to it is not about race. Tell it, you've seen so much black on black violence, you didn't think it would notice. Remark to your neighbor how these dogs call each other dogs. We doing them a favor. These strays are too aggressive. Red zone dogs need to be put down for public safety. Tell it. This is not about race. It's about public safety. It's about bad grades. It's about marijuana. It's about listening to that thug music too loud, standing on that street corner too long, waving that cell phone too high, wearing those pants too low, knocking on that door too colored. Tell it. It's about rebellion, which is fighting back. It's about fighting back. There is, after all, some reason that melanin seeks after bullets the way it does. Some reason shotgun shells fall for black boys, sorry, black dogs in streets. Gives them what they ask for, rends their flesh like embedded collars, like chains, like leashes, like whips. Tell it you didn't see its hands up. Tell it you thought you saw a gun. Tell it whether its future was bright or not is inconsequential. It has never been about what it will be. It's about what it is and will always be. So when it jumps on the bed after a storm and muddies perfectly good sheets, tell it it is a bad dog. Remind your wife of why it never should have been allowed in the house in the first place. On, How you will nonetheless graciously permit table scraps if it licks the hand that beats it. Tell it you are a good master. Tell it your yard is its home now. Show it the receipt. Tell it stay. Tell it speak. Tell it roll over. Tell it play dead. Bang. Play dead. Bang. Play dead. Stay. Good boy.